Welcome to our explorations in savagery. Today we are completing Canto 3 of Book 2, The Glory and the Fall of Life. As always, with our brother Alok, Namaskar. And this last letter, at least what has been printed in Savitri, <coughs> but I have found some other things in the uh, in the new volume, Life uh, Letters on Poetry and Art. There are some more letters on Savitri by Sri Aurobindo, but this one is in 1948. So only two years. I am afraid I am too much preoccupied with the constant clashes with the world and the devil to write anything at length, even about your new poems. This is Amal, The Adventure of the Apocalypse. A few lines must suffice. In fact, as I had to explain the other day to Dilip, my only other regular correspondent, my push to write letters or to new literary production has dwindled almost to zero. This, apart from savitry, and even savitry, has very much slowed down, and I am only making the last revisions of the first part already completed. The other two parts are just now in cold storage. So we see how much he poured down in those last two years through Narodbaran, his scribe, and we'll come to that later. And I think it's important to emphasize very often when we, you know, draw comparisons, let's say, between poets or writers or any field, mm -hmm. we draw comparison on the positive side of the work. But there is a, another side of the work, the negative side of the work, which, uh, as far as I know, very few have even dared to take up. So Sri was uh, had taken up even that side of the work, which was to clear the passage for the rest of humanity to follow, to enter into the darkness, as he said, grey and nude. Yes. So that's a whole side of Sri work which is very difficult to define, describe, or even, you know, speak about. Comprehend. <laughs> Comprehend, yes. <clears throat> because normally when we assess the work of a person, it's always the positive side, what the person has achieved or done. But this side, where there is an entire inner battle, siege, combat, and to navigate through that, to clear a whole journey for others to come, is something amazing. And I think that's what we see. We, we are going to start with almost uh, a direct reference to that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Although he once had felt the eternal's clasp. Of course, he here is Ashupati. Yeah. Although he once had felt the eternal's clasp, too near to suffering worlds, his nature lived. And where he stood, where entrances of night. There we are. I think uh, this is compassion. Just to be near us, to be, to suffer us, <laughs> to endure us. And Mother says, no, on the Samadhi, who have suffered all, endured all. Yes. I think he suffered and endured our humanness. And entrances of night. And that word that we hear again and again, the Holocaust of the Supreme. Yes, Holocaust of the Supreme. It becomes very difficult to read after this. You know, you are overcome by a different kind of emotion. <laughs> Hardly too close beset by the world's care can the dense mold in which we have been made return sheer joy to joy, pure light, to light. At one place the mother says this to a disciple 
when he says that if people do not love us what should we do should we not love them and mother says yes but how much more you should return love when you receive love you know one has never thought it like yeah. that yeah when you receive love it's obvious that the return has to be love yes when you don't receive love yes you should give love and that is something very nice but very often in human life earth nature the divine pours light and we respond by doubt the divine pours love and we respond with all kinds of complaints misgivings so its human nature is not built like that this mold cannot even understand the love of the divine that also she speaks of several times that the divine love is often felt by human beings as something very cold and remote but it contains within itself a deep heart of love gathers into itself universal pain yeah. once again the story of shiva comes very handy you know he is an ascetic of ascetics so much so that it's very difficult even for the world mother to awaken and arouse him to love yet when there is this um, you know fight between the gods and the demons going on and then they come together so you know it's a yagna so in the yagna everybody gets his share of something like a prasadam so for shiva the prasad is poison he everybody else gets nice things the blue throated yes ascetic. the blue throated ascetic but he says okay i must also take my share and he takes the poison yeah. which comes from the bubbles of the earth so this is love you know this deep compassion so similarly mother says about gratitude yes she says people send me their gratitude for helping in a difficult situation illness or anything but how few send their gratitude when nothing has happened because oh. it has been just taken away what is worse is that when because of intervention things have happened and <laughs> there is somebody else to whom the gratitude goes <laughs> <laughs> but that's what earth nature is and they know it for its tormented will to think and live first to a mingled pain and pleasure woke earth nature wakes up first to pleasure and pain and still it keeps the habit of its birth a dire duality is our way to be so as of now we still keep that atavism atavistic habit and yes. when we speak of atavism you know in in psychotherapy we have this so you know people do past past regression they go back to okay in this life when you were a baby you experience certain root shocks or whatever and therefore you have a warped personality <laughs> then people went still further past life regression not only this life previous life but the real problem is not about this life or past life it's the nature of matter and earthly life <laughs> how far back we can go so mother takes us right through to the beginning of the journey because matter contains this it doesn't matter in one life you may or may not have experienced it may not even be in a previous life but it's the nature of earthly life matter has grown under that um, you know that kind of stress of pain and suffering and duality so that's how it responds the moment we take up this cloak it knows no other and nolini says the yoga now is hour to hour yes hour to hour and so now shobindo from another angle because this truth he will reveal in different places in different ways this is another aspect a uh, beauty of shirbindo that he approaches the same problem from multiple yes, sides yes, yes, yes. thereby making a complete picture in the crude beginnings of this mortal world life was not nor minds play nor hearts desire so many people would think it was peace but the peace of the dead silence when earth was built in the unconscious void and nothing was save a material scene identified with sea and sky and stone her young gods yearned for the release of souls asleep in objects vague inanimate 
so these young gods are the gods of the material plane yesterday we read description in ahana and they wanted to awaken the soul which was asleep peacefully blissfully like a baby in the womb but when a baby has to come out there is stir there is pain there is labor is literally called labor pain you know without without the labor outwardly the pain of birth so suddenly they they feel that there must be release of souls in that desolate grandeur in that beauty bare in the deaf stillness mid the unheeded sounds heavy was the uncommunicated load of godhead in a world that had no needs uncommunicated load it's like someone who is burdened with anguish or inspiration and wants to express it yes but is unable to express it so it's another kind of angst that human beings experience uh, very often at least uh, you know in a different context but essence is the same uh, i see people who go through a kind of depression but this depression is simply because they are unable to express their true nature which is held back within it can be a very painful thing without really realizing and they don't know why they are suffering but this suffering is because something wants to release itself but is unable to release either because the instruments are not ready or well it's not yet become ripened that's why before people uh, turn to yoga there is a phase very often when people go through this kind of restlessness this seeking this feeling of being imprisoned mother speaks about all these things and they don't quite know what's really brewing inside and then one day it bursts open and there is a door and a light and a joy for none was there to feel or to receive you know it can be a very miserable situation when you want to give and there is none to receive <laughs> it's it's very that's why one of the reasons why divine you know went into creation many many other aspects are there but at one place shubindra says that we can relate to the divine in many ways in the synthesis and at the end he says the indulgent love of a mother and then he says that and the divine mother likes it to be so that the soul comes to her in all kinds of difficulties and distress why so that she can pour her heart of love on the creatures so very often people ask should we ask the mother they should of course because she has come as mother she has not come as a guru as a teacher but if we want to keep her as a guru she it's a let down she 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 says that that oh, people yes. insist on making me a guru i can see now so they want me to behave in a certain way as a teacher does sitting on pedestal giving commands do this don't do this she says but i have the heart of a universal mother so people could approach her for everything and she likes it that's the beauty yes <laughs> it's not that she doesn't like it she likes it because she can pour her heart of love something i would say about what mother said about the samadhi too she said say everything to shri arbindo yes tell him all your problems your difficulties speak to him there and once she saw she was up looking from her room and she saw a mother push her child's head on the samadhi and she said you see they are already making a religion of yes. it yes <laughs> and this thing about samadhi in fact she goes on to say yeah. now he is accessible to all yes readily accessible anyone can approach him from for yes. anything yes and he yes. hears he listens yes and responds immersed no more in matters okay few lines about yes. this solid mass which brooked no throb of sense could not contain their vast creative urge immersed no more in matters harmony the spirit lost its statusk repose so this is also you know this this aspect of yoga that in this yoga on one side one has to bring out the inmost soul and open to the higher planes but one has to also work on the instrument so that they can support the play of the spirit yes. 
otherwise there will be increasing you know disharmony and imbalance so here the spirit eventually broke free and what happens as a result of it in the uncaring trance it groped for sight passion for the movements of a conscious heart famishing for speech and thought and joy and love in the dumb insensitive wheeling day and night hungered for the beat of yearning and response all this is in a stone we never see a stone like that yeah. and that's why one can awaken it in a stone this whole tantric puja of what is called as pran pratishtha where you make an image then you invoke the deity and then for whatever days the deity is invoked this image becomes or an idol becomes a means or a conduit to pour things upon the world and shivendra speaks about it that there is a truth in it yes. he speaks about pran pratishtha that there is a truth in it that if you invoke and put it in even it could be a piece of stone but of course uh, they try to make the idol as much close to their own image and then it can pour but it's very difficult to keep it for long that's why after few days they take it for <laughs> immersion which is not a good thing you feel sad but this is the basis behind it that even within the stone there is the same consciousness it's yearning for release the poised in conscience shaken with a touch the intuitive silence trembling with a name the cry to life to invade the senseless mold and in brute forms awake divinity so all these young gods are the elemental gods who have shape matter the gods of sea the god of river the god of forest and you know the god the god of stone all these you know mountains now they want more so they call life and this is where shurbindo's uh, you know understanding or revelation about how evolution takes place that there is something in present which suddenly feels the yearning and then something from above comes and awakens it so same thing with the supramental change that the supramental truth is hidden inside us and a point comes when it begins to yearn for release and it takes different forms in human natures one of them is that one is no more satisfied with the human frame she speaks of that something else something else what that else is we don't know yeah of course we may give it a name an ideal but very often these are mental images and it wants it then as a result of this yearning and call from below a corresponding truth from above answers and yes. awakens it so this process he is describing us with reference to life that it yearns well, for life yes once madhav pandit came out to he used to come out every week to oroville to the center and give a talk and he said every leap in the evolution has been preceded by an involution absolutely and a time comes when this that which was involuted is ready now to emerge and that's when we go through this evolutionary angst and a response from above yes so with reference to life which of course is way back this evolutionary leap would have taken place a voice was heard on the mute rolling globe a murmur moaned in the unlistening void a being seemed to breathe where once was none you know um, i felt this uh, experience um, you know uh, on the shores of ganges in shivakashi that's you know not this shivakashi shiv ganga that's near um, uh, you know haridwar so when you sit on the shores they have some stones which contain moss fresh moss so looking at that stone covered with moss i literally had an impression that it is breathing you know it has come alive mm. actually that's how life comes you know this algae which is one yeah. of the first yeah. life forms yeah. to form it suddenly comes alive it begins to become you know have a beauty it begins to breathe so it begins to breathe where once was none something pent up in dead in sentient depths denied conscious existence lost to joy turned as if one asleep since dateless time this uh, truth is revealed in many stories um, 
you know a typical story where a princess is sleeping in her fortress for a long long time waiting for prince charming to come who will come facing all the dangers and eventually come and wake her up with a kiss and they will get married to each other this story is symbolic of the same thing that even though she is asleep she is dreaming of this who will come and wake her up so she is the nature at whatever level it is and then after thousands of years that prince will eventually come seeking under various circumstances and then she will be asleep and the two will get married so it's you know all evolution is like that always aware of its own buried reality what a powerful line this is aware of its own buried reality remembering its forgotten self and right it yearned to know to aspire to enjoy to live and there it is so the first contact with this reality is that we become aware of something inside which yearns for release its own forgotten self and right right <coughs> life heard the call and left her native light so then the gods of life will come which shobindu will describe us in subsequent cantos overflowing from her bright magnificent plain on the rigid coil and sprawl of mortal space here to the gracious great winged angel poured her splendor and her swiftness and her bliss so we see these forms living forms which carry within them an inherent joy any living thing you see uh, it's very interesting to see a new leaf come on a plant can feel your heart with joy or just seeing the green grass in the morning it can feel the heart with joy because you know it contains that uh, life in its purity which has just rushed down and awakened matter of course you can feel it in pure matter also looking at river looking at a mountain but this is so much more palpable so much more easy to contact or just seeing a flower bloom this by the way mother gives a cure for depression so <laughs> i can't say this and people come that look at a flower <laughs> but it's so true that if you look at a flower and look at it deep enough it can cure us of many you know that qualities of flower which spontaneously reveal the psychic presence in the vegetal kingdom uh, it you know looking at birds which fly or hearing that sounds all this can fill us with life hope joy will to live yes, yes. because that's what life is about yes. and that it's such a beautiful line the next line hoping to fill a fair new you world with, with joy, joy. <gasps> this is the characteristic movement of life joy and par and of course all else that accompanies it and this is a beautiful line as comes a goddess to a mortal's breast how powerful this line is you know uh, it reminds me of uh, this other long poem urvashi so urvashi is a very symbolic poetry where pururavas who is the um, you know originator among the originators of the kaurava and pandava clan then it is no more kaurava and pandavas and he marries urvashi who is a nymph from the heavens so with great difficulty she comes accepts but she says look i have certain conditions i will stay with you but only if these 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 because earth is not ready to hold that light shobinda has spoken of apsaras as you know they are basically carry within themselves that light they are not uh, bad beings as later mythologies portray they are basically harbingers of light their dance is full of light and how they come and suddenly awaken a heart to love to joy and here is this line as comes a goddess to a mortal's breast this whole story of pururavas is very symbolic and fills his days with her celestial clasp she is stooped to make her home in transient shapes so life comes and picks up the brute heart of a stone and transforms it into a heart of beauty and love and releases it into the air it begins to fly yes, how beautiful in matter's womb she cast the immortal's fire 
So life is also immortal. This Yobindo says that, that it's only matter that undergoes, uh, you know, degeneration and life simply withdraws from the form and takes up another form. Life is like that. It doesn't die, it is immortal by its very nature. In the unfeeling vast, woke thought and hope, smote with a charm and beauty, flesh and nerve, and forced delight on earth's insensible frame. So this is what is going to happen now. Supermind will be forced upon us. Mother speaks of that. But when she was asked that, how will people know? She said, they may not know. They may simply think that they may complain that they are getting blows. But it's not blows. It's the supermind forcing itself. Molding us despite ourselves. That's what we need after all, you know. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna used to say there are three types of gurus. One who just give a prescription and that's it. Do this, do that. Another which get the medicine, leave it with you. And the third type used to say will catch hold of the throat and put the medicine in the mouth. <laughs> Close your mouth and say gulp it. So you are forced to gulp. <laughs> and you know, the mother combines all the three. But only thing is, she is much gentler in her ways. She, she would not press our throat but say, why don't you sing a song? And when we sing a song, she puts the medicine. And we don't even know that it has gone in and is having its effect. <laughs> so, May I read the next two lines? Yes, please. Because I love them so much. Yeah. Alive and clad... Dressing the earth. Alive and clad with trees and herbs and flowers, earth's great brown body smiled towards the skies. Wow. Why not a few more? Because it just continues. Azure. But while... No. no Azure so. replied. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Azure replied to Azure in the sea's laugh. Is that sky blue color? As your new sentient creatures fill the unseen depths. Life's glory and sweetness ran in the beauty of beasts. Man dared and thought and met with his soul the world. Life's glory and swiftness ran in the beauty of beasts. Man dared and thought and met with his soul the world. So all this life has done already and it will do further because its origin is in the supramental plane. That's why Shobhinda speaks of as divine life as the ideal. It will eventually end up divinizing clay. But in the meanwhile something happens. But while the magic breath was on its way, before her gifts could reach our prisoned hearts, a dark, ambiguous presence questioned all. Mother speaks about it. In fact, at one place he says that it is as if some practical joker came and spoiled the play. Evolution was not meant to take this tortuous route. It was meant to be like a blossoming of the flower. So then when the disciple began to ask about metaphysical theories, he said that's not important why it happened. The point is it has happened. And what we can do now. So this is the most practical answer. Yeah. That why it has happened. There could be several things. We can speak of involution. We can speak of hundred things. But the fact is that at this point. This is how it is. And what we can do next. That's what is important. When we have arrived we shall know. She says that. When we have arrived we shall know. But at this point this is the situation. And uh, this ambiguous presence questioned all. Of course is referring to the inconscient, but more so when the inconscient becomes a questioning mind in the mind which doesn't give a straight response, always twists the movements of truth. So inconscient in its origin is not so bad. She speaks about that. It's plastic. Still it can change. But in the mind it becomes very rigid, like stone with edges. It's very difficult because it's already become crystallized in the mind. It questions everything. So that's Dark, ambiguous presence. Questioned all. So that's why, you know, children up till five, 
will receive all the nice stories that Hanuman can fly. But when they are 13, 14, even 10, how can it be possible? So that's where, you know, it comes. And it has its purpose that, of course, we know. But it spoils everything. The secret will that robes itself with night. So there is a purpose. That's why Shubhinda has used W with a will with a capital W. Mm -hmm. The secret yes. will has yes. chosen to robe itself in <clears throat> night to make the perfection yet more perfect. To make sure that nothing is left out at the end when things are done. So there is always a spoil sport. Somebody who is there to criticize. Yes. And it's, he's a good guy actually who is playing the role of a bad guy. The good guy is that his role is to not to see what is good happening in you, but to point out precisely that which is <laughs> not right. And this guy is doing his own role. So the secret will robes itself as night with night and offers to spirit the ordeal of the flesh. Mm. This is what the mother takes up upon herself. She says all the time, all the suggestions keep coming, that old spirituality. That all this is very fine. You can have as many experiences as you want in the higher realms. But here in matter, in the body, it yeah. is still the same. Yeah. This was the challenge. And, and it won't change. It won't change. And people, you know, keep on again and again. Spirituality means meditation. You know, in I think uh, 67, 68, maybe a little later, when um, architect of Auroville, so he, uh, what was his name? Roger. 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 So he asked um, the mother about, you know, he wanted to know what all about it and says, I, I am getting interested in spirituality. So tell me about meditation and all. And Satprem would say that it's not like this. And then he recounts this to mother that I told him, no, all that is gone. That is old spirituality. Now you have to open with trust. So, so. She says, yes, mother says, yes, you are right. But it's very difficult to explain this. Because people want to do something. I want to meditate. Tell me a way, you know, somebody who should initiate and, you know, people ask this question, how do I begin? Give me a technique. <laughs> Give me a technique. And she says, it's none of that because all this will lead to inner experiences. That is all right. They will enrich the consciousness. But that is not what we want. And this is the difficult part. Offered to the spirit, the ordeal of the flesh. Spirit is immortal, but tied to flesh, which is born, grows, decays and dies. Spirit is ageless. Spirit is free from diseases. But the body with which it is identified is subject to all these things. Spirit is always in a state of delight. But the body experiences pleasure and pain. So the ordeal of the flesh, it has to take upon itself. This is the cross, you know, in Bible that we all have yes. to bear. The mystic cross. Imposed a mystic mask of death and pain. Now this is the first reverse transformation. So what now they are doing, what we call as transformation, is actually putting things back into their true state. In turn, now in the slow and suffering years, Sir Jones, the winged and wonderful wayfarer, and can no more recall her happier state, but must obey the inert, inconscience law. Insensible foundation of a world in which blind limits are on beauty laid, and sorrow and joy as struggling comrades live. Just what you said. Yep. And this evil spell, this also comes in many stories, casting an evil spell. There, is, there are two stories which come to my mind. One is Ahilya, a great yogini. And she is given a curse and she becomes a stone. So it's like falling into a stone-like state. It's not like literally becoming physically a stone. To be redeemed by grace, she is yearning now once again. Another in Greek mythology when uh, Odysseus is returning. Oh, yes. So, yes. you know, this... Uh, Circe. Circe, yeah. who would uh, offer you nice things, goodies to eat meat and wine and song and then she had a magic wand she would put it around and you will turn into swines of right. course you know uh, it's a symbolic thing so odysseus uh, has heard about the song 
and he says okay he goes and one of them has managed to escape because he didn't take the wine and suspected something so odysseus uh, understands now the whole story so he takes the wine he eats the meat but the moment she lifts the magic wand he pulls his sword and says you stop this so it's very interesting story that he eats the meat drinks the wine but does not undergo the evil spell so this transmutation or the reverse transmutation that's what inconscient does and this is what is fall in yoga because of the action of the inconscient and the resistance of the inconscient a person who has full of faith suddenly can become full of doubts a person who had so much love for the divine begins to be full of complain and grudging and all this can happen it's no it's known in yoga because the inconscient suddenly has an upper hand of course these are all temporary movements but best avoided so here a dim and dreadful muteness fell on her a ballist was her subtle mighty spirit and slain her boon of child god happiness and all her glory into littleness turned and all her sweetness into a maimed desire it has to recover it through remembrance yeah. through this also very interesting you know i am reminded of another story you know so many stories from different angles so there is the story of hanuman in indian mythology so he actually represents the power of life in its fullest he is the child of wind god and in his childhood itself he is endowed with tremendous energy and capacities so much so that he overshoots the frame and begins to upset the world order because of this tremendous impetus that he brings you know somebody flying to eat the moon so indra hits him and you know he falls to the ground and he actually dies but he is revived by shiva but the story goes that since then his since indra's thunderbolt struck his uh, this part chin that's how he is called hanuman this is the hanu so you know it struck so it's hanuman but he forgets all about his strength so he lives like an ordinary monkey running from here to there he is he doesn't know that he is so strong so how to revive this strength again because we are all under this kind of spell that we are incapable yeah. we are useless so in the story there is a great clue when the time comes for the great leap across the ocean to search for sita hanuman is sitting like an ordinary monkey and jamban says hanuman you can do it he says no 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 you are telling me i am an ordinary monkey i have come here somehow but you expect me to take this leap of course you can take it i can't take it he says for the sake of lord rama you can take it by the will of rama you can take it by the grace of rama you can take it and then he suddenly is reminded who he is and he takes the leap and comes back so this this in through story is that you know life has undergone such a change that it has become so little tied around little things pettinesses but when it is at the service of the divine mother has said that this is one of the ways to transform when it puts itself at the service of the divine automatically it undergoes that change and remembers and is capable of doing things which ordinarily it could not yes so you know that's what and all her sweetness into a maimed desire and what has become here to feed death with her works is here life stone every moment we are living and every moment we are also feeding death this is the unfortunate part so veiled was her immortality that she seemed inflicting consciousness on unconscious things this what how we respond yeah. to divine touch no no don't wake us up we are very fine in our little comfort zones we have a system of theory psychoanalysis materialism positivism this world that don't what is this new thing shurbindo brings it's like painful because the moment we are aware we have to make an effort we don't want that we want to live in a comfort zones and stone lives in a comfort zone but when life comes it prods it to fly to run to breathe to do effort and therefore it it looks like infliction look at the word inflicting consciousness on unconscious things an episode in an eternal death it looks like every day we see the sun it sets 
as if darkness is real and every morning for brief period the sun comes out but the truth is that darkness is not real it's just the earth turning her face away from the sun but that's not a realization that we have while on earth looks like oh these momentary glimpses of the divine who knows but that is the reality but when we are tied to earth nature we turn ourselves away and we feel darkness but that's not real but that's how it appears an episode in an eternal death that life is an episode a myth of being that must forever cease such was the evil mystery of her change and shirobindo comes to redeem it yeah. we'll read last four lines and stop so veiled was her immortality that she seemed inflicting consciousness on unconscious things an episode in an eternal death a myth of being that must forever cease such was the evil mystery of her change with this ends the canto the glory and the fall of life